Hi, it's Dave. So Tesla just reported Q1 delivery numbers. So let's take a look here. So for production, Tesla reported 305,407 cars made. And for deliveries, they delivered 310,048 cars, of which you have 14,724 Model S and Xs, and the rest were Model 3s and Model Ys. Tesla also reported their Q1 2022 financial results will happen on April 20th or 420 at 4.30 uh, Central Time. Elon shared a tweet and he said this was an exceptionally difficult quarter due to supply chain interruptions and China zero COVID policy. Outstanding work by Tesla team and key suppliers saved the day. All right, so what we have here is Tesla has reported record deliveries. They have delivered more cars this quarter than any other quarter. And this is despite supply chain challenges and a factory shutdown in Shanghai for about six days more than they expected. Further, other automakers during Q1, their production was down um, big. U.S. sales, for example, in Q1, GM was down 20% and Toyota was down 15%. A lot of automakers are just having a lot of um, problems with securing, let's say, chips for their cars. On the production side, Tesla production was slightly lower this quarter than Q4. So this quarter, they produced 305,407 uh, cars. Last quarter, they produced 305,840 uh, cars. All right, we've got some possible margin tailwinds or good news, actually, I think this quarter. So first off is the price increases we've seen in the past couple quarters that Tesla has implemented. We're going to see these uh, price increases realized more in Q1, let's say, than even last quarter. Second, you're going to have probably higher FSD take rate and revenue because Tesla has been prioritizing those people who have um, chosen the option right for the $12,000 um, FSD option especially in the US and then most likely we're gonna see probably less expedite fees right um, that were one-time charges that we saw in Q4 all right further if you look at Q4 operating expenses last quarter they included actually 340 million dollars of an Elon Musk payroll tax that was due to the 2012 uh, plan where he exercised stock options last quarter. And then it had an additional $245 million of Elon Musk's CEO compensation plan expense from his 2018 plan as well. So last quarter, we saw $565 million of one-time expenses that we won't see at least the vast majority for Q1. So Q1 2022 operating expenses should be significantly lower, thus increasing operating margin and profit. Let's look at some of the numbers here. So this is last quarter and these are um, just my personal estimates for this quarter here. So you have the deliveries uh, slightly increasing. I have automotive revenue slightly increasing as well. Um, regulatory credits, I'm kind of just pegging at slightly lower. It's kind of anyone's guess here. Automotive profit obviously will be slightly lower because of revenue. And automotive gross margin, I'm pegging at you know about the same slightly higher. We have total revenue slightly higher, gross profit slightly higher, and gap gross margin uh, comparable, I'm, I'm thinking. For operating expenses here, I see this going down about, let's say $400 million or so. It could be actually more because we're not seeing right that big $565 million one-time Elon Musk related charge. Then you have income for operations will go higher um, as a result. Operating margins, and this is where I think maybe P analysts aren't expecting this, but I think it'll jump um, almost 3%. You have net income uh, going down to EPS of a non-gap of 2.8% dollars or so. And then you have adjusted EBITDA at about $4 billion. All right, let's zoom out a bit and let's look at kind of my estimates for 2022, uh, the full year. I think you have deliveries. I'm probably significantly trending up for Q2, Q3, and Q4. I'm expecting probably a little less than 1.6 million. Of course, this is anyone's guess. A lot can happen. Um, regulatory credits, it's hard to see. I'm just looking that they're trending down. Automotive gross margin, I'm seeing them slightly trending up, especially with FSD as it gets better, people take, um, take rate goes higher. Um, revenues will go higher with more volume. And then I'm looking at gross margin going up. Also operating expenses, I'm you know expecting slightly to go up every quarter from here. And operating margin, now this is one of the things I think, again, is probably not um, what analysts are expecting, but I expect Tesla to uh, break 20% operating margins uh, toward the end of this year. And then you, you look at um, EBITDA, is going to 5.5 billion and 6.1 billion dollars by the end of this year. If you zoom out and if we compare 2021 with 2022 and if we look specifically at this operating margin field here you see tesla has started out in q1 of 2021 at a 5.7 percent operating margin the way you get operating margin is you take this income from operations which is operating profit and you divide it by their total revenues and you get a certain percent right which is their operating margin so if you look at this it's trended up to 11 percent almost 15 percent 
last quarter. This quarter, I think we're going to see a significant boost to 70%. And I think by the end of the year, probably going to see something around 20% operating margin, which will be fantastic. All right, let's look forward a couple years from now. So let's look at 2023. Here are just my personal estimates. I think, you know, deliveries uh, trend up. I'm expecting, let's say, 2.4 million cars delivered. Uh, revenues will trend up. I think gross margins will continue to trend up. And I think even though you could factor in kind of a growing operating expenses, a lot of Tesla's operating profit will show because you'll see this operating margin continue to go up. I think this is just you know, my, my personal estimates. And you'll see uh, adjusted EBITDA. This is another figure I'm lo looking at closely, uh, trending up to eight, uh, close to $9 billion, like in a single quarter. Looking out to 2024, you see deliveries continue to trend up, let's say 3.4 million cars or so. Um, you look at revenues continue to grow. And I'm still looking at automotive gross margin continue to trend up with FSD. You have operating expenses continue to grow, but not as fast as revenue. And therefore you see the operating margins continue to trend up. Now this is, if this happens, this is I think really gonna surprise people if Tesla actually is able to achieve mid twenties, right? Operating margin. And again, you see, um, yeah, their income obviously goes up. Um, we're looking at what, 11 to $12 billion, right? Of, of net income in uh, Q4 2024. And adjusted EBITDA will be, you know, probably around $13 billion at the end of 2024. Of course, these are just my estimates, but yeah, they sound ridiculously kind of crazy. But if, yeah, if you just plot out your own numbers, right? Quarter to quarter, you know, estimate your own deliveries and revenue and also expenses, you'll get your own estimates of what you can expect for income, um, EPS, and also for adjusted EBITDA. All right, so overall, I think things are on track for Tesla. They're showing they're able to weather the supply chain storm and other challenges. And as an investor, I think Tesla is in a sweet spot of sorts regarding their growth. Growing from, let's say, 500,000 cars a year to several million cars a year over a several year period, it's going to show, I think, revenue skyrocketing. And also because Tesla's operating expenses are so lean, we're likely gonna see a lot of that gross profit flow directly down to operating profit, resulting in a company with very strong cash flows and a growing cash balance as well. A couple main issues I'll be watching out for in the coming quarters and years are the following. Number one, how fast can Tesla grow? And number two, can Tesla continue to grow their margins. Of course, nothing is guaranteed, but I'm bullish on the company because I think they can do both of these things and probably do so for many years to come. All right, hope this has been helpful. If it has, good like and subscribe. All my videos can be found as an audio podcast as well. Just search for Dave Lee on investing in your favorite podcast player. I'm also on Twitter at HeyDay7. All right, we'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks.